Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to talk to you guys about the two new Ultimate World Boss modes, Super Giant and Ebony Maw. Now these two are particularly interesting because of the effects that are in uh, the stages that make it more difficult for you to complete them with teams. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to explain the effects and then I wanted to show you guys some different team compositions that you will be able to use. Uh, and then finally, I want to show you a little bit of gameplay. I want to focus most on the team compositions, both on the team setups and on the striker lists, because I find that a lot of people ask these questions. I can't beat Ebony phase one. I can't beat Super Giant or Black Dwarf phase one, but they already have the requisite characters, the pieces of the puzzle. They just don't know how to put those pieces together and make proper synergy. So I want to spend the most amount of time explaining that. But before we do that, we need to talk about the effects. So the phase one effect of Super Giant is quite long. It receives all damage reduced when being attacked by a normal character. So if Super Giant is taking damage from any single character in the game, not a summon, then the damage will be reduced. When she's being attacked by a summon, their attack and defense will be increased and they will be immune to fear. So when you attack with any regular character, your damage is reduced by 80%. So four fifths of your damage is basically negated which is a lot, um, but summons will have their attack and defense increased by 320% and they will be immune to fear. This is the main effect of this stage. There are some additional effects if you go on to phase two and phase three, they're the regular effects about, you know, you switch and you lose buffs, or if you get hit, you automatically switch, or every time you switch, there's an increase on your cooldown of your skills or of, of switching. But that is the main kind of theme of this stage. And this has kind of puzzled people because they thought maybe I could use Loki, maybe Kingpin, oh, maybe Red Skull, thinking of characters who have lots of summons. Unfortunately, as of yet, that is not the case. If you check out the ranking overall, you'll see that for Super Giant, it's still just brute force. And by brute force, I mean just do as much damage as you can, as fast as you can, ignoring the stage effects. So if you wanna try and get cute with some summons, it's probably not going to work. And I haven't seen it work out with anyone just yet. I did actually try it with some of my tier one characters. Uh, I tried it with tier two Kid Kaiju because Hivo is technically a summon, but it wasn't enough. Moving on to Ebony Maw. The crux of Ebony Maw's stage is a little bit different than Super Giants. He does have a lot of additional skills in the stage that I wanna talk about a little bit later but he also has some interesting effects. So physical damage dealt to him is reduced by three fourths or 75%. So you should not use characters like Wolverine or Agent Venom because they will do next to no damage. And then if it's not an elemental attack, so if it's just regular energy damage, the damage is reduced by 70, which is almost 75%. So all of Doctor Strange's attacks will be reduced by 70%. Most of Sharon Rogers' attacks will be reduced by 70%, but Dormammu and uh, Jean Grey and other elemental damage dealers, Cold, Fire, Lightning, Poison, will not have their damage reduced at all. So he doesn't have any additional health, additional damage, but he just takes a lot less damage from the two primary sources, physical and energy. It's just that um, elemental damage, whether it's energy elemental or physical elemental from someone like Red Hulk, will be taken as normal damage. So here again, uh, if you check out the rankings, you'll see that it's basically the same strategy of brute force. However, the list is also dominated heavily by Jean Grey. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, I don't have Jean Grey, who can I substitute? Well, I have seen and I have uh, tried myself with both Dormammu with one team setup and Doctor Strange with another team setup who can at least clear phase one and sometimes phase two if you have a really good team up. So let's go back now and talk about uh, what teams I would recommend you try for Super Giant and then Ebony and then we'll jump into some gameplay at the end. For the Super Giant mission, you only have basically one choice for your leadership and that is Ancient One. She-Hulk is not going to work, so you choose Ancient One, preferably Tier 2 because on top of having the energy damage to uh, blast types, it's also giving that uh, team up uh, to all allies that gives dodge ignore which is really important because most of the world bosses in the ultimate mode are higher than level 61 so if you go in with no dodge ignore especially in phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 you'll see that they're dodging a lot of your attacks and this is especially true for the striker list 
So now that you have Ancient One, you're also going to need Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson Tier 2 gives everyone on the team extra damage to superheroes or supervillains, reduced damage from them, and the, the guaranteed crit. So this is a really important one-two punch. And you see this as well in Blast Mail. You also see Phil Coulson by himself in the unrestricted ABX day. These two pieces are going to maximize your damage. And then you can throw on one of the three characters that can do this stage. So Sharon Rogers can do this stage. Doctor Strange can also do this this stage, although it's very tight as far as the time goes. You will be using at least two minutes, if not more. And then finally, I'm pretty sure that Jean Grey can also clear this stage uh, being a blast type. It is difficult, but if you stick to the ABX rotations, which are optimal for damage output and timing your damage procs, you should be able to kill these world bosses as long as you can survive their attacks and not get too punished by them. There are some quirky mechanics with Supergiant as far as her um, black illusions go and the fear effects that can last up to five seconds. But it's important to get the team composition down first because if you're trying it with all these different team compositions and you're not having success, you should try it with these true methods first before you go off venturing on your own and wasting gold. So you have this team set up, now you need your strikers. The strikers are also very important for world boss ultimate despite the fact that they're no longer useful basically for world boss. Um, the, the typical strategy that I like to employ and I see a lot of other people doing is two or three dodge ignore strikers and then two or three damage strikers. And the damage strikers that do best tend to be these 10% to supervillains, especially because if you're not using uh, Sharon Rogers, you can put her in. And she's a great striker because, as you know, she deals massive damage. Another one that people like to use is uh, Shang-Chi, Ironheart, Ancient One, if you're not using them as a leader, uh, Moon Knight, or uh, even Hyperion can be used in this case. So for me, I'm going to go with two Dodge Ignore and three Damage Dealers. For the fifth Damage Dealer, you can go with another one of the 10% uh, because they do stack. Or you can choose someone like Doctor Strange, someone like Dormammu. Keep in mind that Supergiant doesn't have freeze uh, immunity, so you can time freeze her with Doctor Strange, which makes the stage a lot easier because you get that constant crowd control, whether he's a striker coming in or he's uh, your main damage dealer and he's freezing her every you know, few seconds. The last team that is viable to use against Supergiant actually revolves around Doctor Strange's leadership and primary damage with Phil Coulson assisting and Sharon Rogers there as a secondary damage dealer. And this one is good because you still get the dodge ignore, you still get the energy damage. This is not as uh, buffed, I think, as Ancient One because Ancient One gives 45% plus, I believe, 25. So it's more. Um, but this allows you to have two damage dealing characters in case you lose one because you take too much damage. This is definitely a safer team to use. However, I don't think it's as optimal. You're gonna take longer on average to clear the stage, but if you're having trouble with it, you can try this du duo and see if they can work. You just need to uh, substitute her as a striker and Ancient One provides an excellent uh, damage boost to the team. Now, although this is a difficult fight, it can be completed if you just stick to the 5-2-3 format with Doctor Strange. Uh, the biggest part here is that Supergiant likes to run around a lot and she can get uh, out of the way of your skill rotation and kind of interrupt your movements. And she can hit you with uh, fear effects while you're not under immunity and that will potentially cause you to die because then she'll be able to hit you with different attacks. The biggest issue I find with Supergiant is that because she moves around so much, uh, you have to reposition Doctor Strange a lot. You can't just sit there tapping 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three, because sometimes she'll run away and then you'll be stuck not being able to cancel one skill into another and then you'll be stuck watching the full animation of your second or third skill and that also can leave you vulnerable to damage. Here, you want to wait until the end and then just iframe the fourth skill because otherwise that blast will probably kill you and then go back into your fifth skill. If you don't have the fourth skill off cooldown, you should have the fifth skill off cooldown. Alternatively, you can do that one, but you do want to wait a little bit. Here I got hit by the uh, fear effect, but it didn't last very long, so I got kind of lucky. Another bonus about having Ancient One on your team is that periodically, when the Ancient One strikes for you, they will leave this kind of orange circle on the ground. I haven't seen one just yet, but when I do, I will let you guys know. And this will uh, remove debuffs. It's kind of like a cleansing circle. So if you do get feared and you can possibly run into that by chance or uh, by using the joystick, 
that is a pretty uh, good way of removing the fear effect and prolonging your life. But it's basically just a damage check at uh, the first phase. Phase 2 and Phase 3 do get a lot harder in terms of how much damage you need to output. And uh, Doctor Strange doesn't fare as good moving forward. Sharon Rogers is more uh, competent at doing that because she has more burst damage. But Sharon Rogers is definitely more difficult to use um, given her survivability is not as good as Doctor Strange. And it's a lot harder to use her skill rotation uh, and complement that with damage at the same time while not missing your obelisk procs. So you can see here that we're gonna get this. Uh, it's gonna take a long time though. And we're just being extra safe. We're going three, maybe four rotations of two and three. Uh, we don't want to risk any mistakes uh, because she does deal a lot of damage with basically all of her skills. Uh, especially these lasers are incredibly uh, intimidating. And you can see there that my third skill was uh, prolonged because I couldn't cancel it for the second skill because she jumped out of the way. And so I was actually in some danger at the end there when I was at the bottom of the screen and the lasers were coming up because Doctor Strange was trying to finish the animation on his third skill and that was putting me uh, at risk. So that is the basic strategy anytime someone says, you know, World Boss Ultimate, Doctor Strange, clear. That's the team up you want to use, that's the setup you want to use, and that is how you're going to be successful, at least for phase one of almost all. I think all of the world boss ultimates. So that's the setup for Super Giant. It's actually quite different for Ebony, which is interesting. So I did want to cover that and show you guys the differences on this team. So for Ebony, you can get it with the team that I just described to you. However, you do have some additional flexibility with the leadership outside of Coulson and Doctor Strange. It's going to be probably more difficult to brute force this with Doctor Strange than the Super Giant World Boss Ultimate, but I have heard that it is possible given, you know, almost the full three minutes. However, you can substitute Ancient One if you don't have them at Tier 2 especially for She-Hulk because now you're facing a male villain. So keep that in mind, but those are basically the only two leaderships for Doctor Strange that you can use. Then for the Strikers, it's essentially the same thing. Dormammu here is a great Striker because he deals elemental damage, so his won't be reduced as heavily as the other characters, but you want that dodge ignore and you want those setups. Another team that you can use for Ebony revolves around Jean Grey, and it's the one you guys saw before. Again, you can use the Ancient One for the Blast Damage and the Ignore Dodge. You can also use Satana as a leadership because of that increase to Fire Damage. You can, for the same reason, also use Red Hulk. And you can also use She-Hulk. I have had the most success using Ancient One's leadership for the Blast and for the Dodge Ignore, but you can experiment with different types. Again, same Strikers two or three dodge ignore and the rest should be damage. If you're finding that you're having more success with more or less of one type, you can try changing them around. You can try four and one or um, you know five and zero maybe, but I think the three and two or two and three is the best kind of balanced state. Another team that you can use against Ebony Maw revolves around the fire damage of Dormammu. But similar to Jean Grey, you are going to need a power up in terms of uh, secondary uh, damage from a tier 2 passive. You can't use Coulson because Dormammu is a villain, but you can use Warwolf. So we're seeing the same uh, popular characters from Extreme Alliance Battle crop up. As far as the leadership goes, your best bet is going to be fire damage from either Satana or Red Hulk. You can, however, try Hela. I don't think you're going to have as much success. As far as the strikers go, you will be able to use uh, a, a bit more variety. I have heard of people using five fire damage strikers and actually achieving success with Dormammu so you can definitely try that out if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous but as always you can go with your recent set of a mix of damage and ignore dodge strikers um, and you can also throw in Doctor Strange if you do have him because he will freeze Ebony because Ebony doesn't have time freeze resistance like uh, Super Giant so let's test it out and see how this stage changes. Super Giant's cha stage does change a lot. I think Ebony's changes more than hers does as far as the skills that he uses and as far as the amount of damage that he outputs. Um, in addition, I do find that this stage is a lot less optimized for performance for your phone or your tablet. So if you do encounter a lot of lag, know that you're not alone. Um, I've experienced a lot of it myself and I'm playing on a quote unquote gaming tablet. 
So let's check out this boss fight right here. So we're going to want to switch to Warwolf. We're going to try to pass the buff over to Dormammu. And you want to basically stick to his uh, Extreme Alliance Battle rotation, except you don't want to use his um, fourth skill. The reason why you don't want to use his fourth skill is because the damage is, although it's decent, it puts him in a very dangerous position. So it's best to stick to his iframe skills, especially his fifth skill if you can time it with the damage proc the way I've done, um, because it's going to protect you the most from damage. You also want to not be too close to Ebony Maw. And the reason why you don't want to be too close to him is because the damage from his uh, meteors, the small meteors that he throws at you, when he's close to you is incredible. He actually throws sometimes three, sometimes six, I believe, or seven meteors and the damage from those, if you're if you're in front of him, as you can see there, I took 5,000 damage. And if you get closer, you can take upwards of 7,000 and sometimes even more. He can one-shot you in a lot of instances. And you just need to be careful as well for that right there. Very, very cool skill. Uh, basically, most of the arena goes up in purple uh, kind of bombs. They're meteors again. Uh, and you have to run to the middle of the arena. But if you stick to Dormammu's regular rotation, skipping a lot of damage there. Skipping his uh, fourth skill because you might die. No, because uh, it does leave him uh, vulnerable, and there's just not a lot of reflect from Ebony if you're not staying that close to him. And you're not going to stay that close to Ebony anyways, because you don't want to get one-shotted by those um, meteors that he summons in between. You also want to stay away from that. Whenever he disappears for the regular meteors, he always does four. So you always want to keep running. And you'll get it. Very interesting boss fight. I love the mechanics. I don't like the lag, but I like how many new types of attacks they've given Ebony for this stage. My rewards aren't very good. Uh, but hopefully these gameplay tips have helped you guys out for both Supergiant and Ebony Maw. Uh, Ebony seems a bit more geared towards uh, difficult to get characters like Dormammu and Jean Grey. But hopefully we'll be able to devise together a strategy to use uh, a non, you know, paywall meta native tier 2 character for one of these clears a la Sharon Rogers or Agent Venom uh, from some of the other World Boss Ultimate stages. So let me know what you guys think of this World Boss Ultimate overview. Of course, guys, you need to have Uru and uniforms geared out if you want to also be able to complete in World Boss Ultimate. That kind of goes without saying. Of course, you also need damage Brock Obelisks and ISO 8 sets. I hope I don't have to remind you guys of that this far into the game. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. We have a special announcement on Twitch. Take care.